Happy Friday. Long time no see, everyone. I'm Amanda, and Keith joining me remotely, and I'm joining myself from the basement. <laughs> the Gimbal Basement. It's a wonderful place. Can you I see put, the disclaimer? Uh, I put a new disclaimer on there. Uh, answer the question questions at your own risk i forget the line they use at like coffee shops or places where they turn the screen around to you what do you remember what they say like cool. something like we just just you just need to answer a couple questions here or something like that and one of them is can you give us a 25 percent tip or something like oh that. really i'll have to pay more attention to that i have not been doing so <laughs> yeah they're good yeah and um i i've i've seen um all kinds of places asking for tips i don't know if i've seen a convenience store but i've seen a variety of places where they don't really do anything but i was in uh, imply that you might want to give them a tip yeah i was in chicago a couple weekends ago and um a number of restaurants that we went to had like we are adding already a 20 percent service charge on there um, if you have an issue with it, please like, let us know almost like you can opt out if you so choose, but they have a little explanation on there as to why they put it on there as opposed to raising their prices or paying their employees. But I thought that was kind of interesting that they kind of guilt you out of not doing it but they do give you the option as well it's <laughs> peculiar to so me. what so i'm at a little place in murray kentucky uh future grounds i think is the name of this coffee shop i'm sitting at and so when i paid then it had a place for me to pick a tip on uh -huh. on my cup of coffee here so yep. what would you do with that? Like, I literally am just at the counter and getting my coffee. And all they do is hand me the coffee. So what's your It's on the screen? A... Yeah, literally, they're not bringing it to the table. They're just standing there taking my orders. But at that moment, it asks for a tip. What, what would you do? Sometimes I do just add the $1. It depends on how much or where I'm at. If it's just for the cup of coffee, I'll do like maybe the lowest percentage. I'll admit. <laughs> okay, so you won't do zero then. You won't I can't do zero. Not to, but don't tempt me. I mean, I'll never say never. I will. I will. I mean, my kid, my kids all say zero. Yeah, for like that, that they say zero. Uh, but it's a funny thing that for almost zero service, you get guilted into tipping, right? Yeah, maybe I have a soft spot for my in-laws who own coffee shops. That okay? I, um, yeah, or just people in the service industry right you know, it is. so and that's actually our topic of today so that was yeah why well, I, I was having a, it was a nice transition i was having a, <laughs> I was having a restaurant i was at a restaurant where i had a waitress and i asked her that question i said what would you do on that and she said zero because i'm actually working right and they get the same tip or more as i do yeah, and I, it's just a, it's a, just a thought provoking question because it all I think it all, all sprung up with COVID. What do you think? Uh, you kind of blocked out. Was it was it like that pre COVID? I've definitely noticed oh, yeah. an influx of Can you things. Hear me? Yeah, I've definitely noticed an influx of that. Um, just kind of asking for more tip or that kind of. Or even the con the um, common topic of when a minimum wage rising or, you know, in other countries, they don't make you tip. And that the conversation of all of that has definitely increased, I think, more since COVID. A little more. I didn't. And, and what we were really wanting to talk to is ser about service day. And I, I thought the tips is a good lead into that because um you know the 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 tip at a counter like that like there's almost no service at a at a counter like that and yeah if you go to a nice restaurant the level of service that's expected for a similar percentage or more is even a much higher expectation yeah and, and 
And so I thought maybe we talk about gimbal service, the expectations of service yeah. and, and what uh, we aspire to in the level of service for our uh, clients and what's going on, what we visualize from other uh, financial institutions in the level of service and, and just how we establish a standard for what we do, not expecting a tip, but expect a high level of service for our clients to really yeah. respect and appreciate. I think we live in a world so, right now where um, service is kind of hard to come by, like good service. Um, a lot of things are online. A lot of, I, I have recognized in my own experiences that people just don't care as much as they once might have. I think the level of care is equivalent to the level of disservice or service declining. Um, but we care here. <laughs> I can tell by your smile that, that, uh, what, what about, let's talk about that, Amanda, the, the idea of caring. I wonder if maybe, and, and I'm not, like trying too hard to pat myself on the back, but maybe the, the service that you help provide for our clients and our team, maybe it starts by us caring about you. Because if you or if people are working somewhere where it doesn't appear that anybody really cares about them, then I'm guessing they don't care. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I'm definitely biased, but I think Gimbal is the best place to work. I have never felt like... <laughs> no one doesn't care about me. Like, you know, even in our gimbal statement, we put um, our families first, our friends first, our coworkers, in addition to our clients. Um, but we, and I'll, I will give you credit for this. You fester just caring and caring about your employees, caring about your coworkers, caring about your friends, caring about relationships in general. And we are in the relationship business. And so um, I interact with people who I think should be in a caring relationship business and they just don't seem to care, <laughs> which motivates me quite a bit to then show how much I care for the clients that we serve because we are in the business of serving others and building relationships and, and caring for people. So what, one of the things I've noticed, if if you can't hear me kind of wave at me because my okay. internet on the screen keeps <laughs> waving in and out, but one of the things I noticed probably in the last 20 years, and, and we've kind of gone away from having a receptionist, but when businesses went from you calling and not getting a human, mm -hmm. then they passed their time that they were paying an employee on to the customer where you had to sit and hold uh, right. for a long period of time right. and now it's, a lot of times you can't even get to a yeah uh, a phone number and you have to email or go to a um, ai chat where you're you're not sure if you've got a human on the other end or when you're going to get a response to a question and so the, even the, the 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 service level from the bigger companies i don't even know how i get a hold of somebody say at Amazon if I had a problem with something at mm. Amazon I don't know if I could or what I would do yeah. at least if I go in Walmart where they don't appear to care there's a customer service desk and I could go ask them a question or right. tar Target does a better job I think yeah 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 Libby and I were talking about this yesterday too of just in an online world of what is good service or how do you even provide service in an online world? And what we kind of boil down to is like how you communicate and what you communicate. So um, I know it can be frustrating to not have a phone number to call and have an actual human on the other line, but if you can connect with someone that in that way, it makes a world of difference. Um, I know some of the other service providers that we use they have phenomenal like chat options where I know it's not a robot on the other line okay. or the other end of the phone or on the other end of the computer. I'm actually talking to a human being um, and they're quick and they know what they're talking about. And um, whether they're communicating verbal or nonverbal cues, um, the accessibility, I think, is a big part that service um, that involves service that 
in some places is lacking, um, but also people are being more innovative to creating different ways of accessing service and getting a service that you want. I spoke to some financial planning students here at Murray State yesterday, and one of the comments I made to them, that they asked me something about my vocation, what I like about it. And one of the things I said is I, I'm fairly sure I've helped at least 100 people retire and complete their retirement. Yep. Which is, uh, 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 we're all going to complete our retirement one day, I guess is what yes. I'm saying. <laughs> and uh, what I really ponder about the long-term service model of Gimbal Financial is what I know as when you retire, your technology skills are at that level of technology when you yeah. retire. Yep. And, and, however, there's a time for which your body doesn't allow um, a correlating um, learning curve with what's going on with technology. You're not able to keep yeah. up with technology. And consequently, I wonder if the large financial services companies that expect everyone to online how they take into account the aging population yeah you want me to answer that <laughs> sure yeah sure because it seems like uh, it'd be very stressful to older people yeah and um i was even talking to a client who um is not retired or of retirement age, but it, it's an intimidate technology is intimidating at any age. Um, and no one so far has retired and not, they kind of had technology like later in life anyways. So I, I'll, I'm curious what will happen with like my children down the road. Will they face that same technology halt by the time they retire because they've, they'll have an iPad when they you know, before they walk or something, but, um, I completely lost my train of thought. What did you ask again? <laughs> we, I was just talking about the, like oh. when you start to have some cognitive limitations yeah. and yeah. there's no longer a human between you and the technology. I wonder what that's going to look like in the future yeah. for people. I think this is a way for innovators to come out and find ways to improve that because I even know with our fidelity.com logins, they make it so easy for you to access your accounts, your tax documents, but it can be a really intimidating step to even log on. Um, so, so many people are used to their paper statements and fidelity is almost incentivizing to get rid of paper statements, kind of to get you out of your comfort zone at many ages. And it can be really intimidating even for young folks. Um, but I was on the phone with a client the other day, one who is intimidated by logging on, um, and I encouraged her to do it. And after she got in, got in there, she said, wow, they really make this so easy. And so that was encouraging for me to hear that it's almost, you just got to take that first step. And I don't know. Um, I think Fidelity has done a phenomenal job. They are way advanced in as far as technology goes. Um, almost too much. Sometimes I think they've, forgotten that people don't like it or some people still don't even have wi-fi or access to an email and so how do we serve those people um are just ways that we can get creative um or just learn to encourage people in that it's something that they can do we are here to hold their hand and walk them through doing it um and help them kind of change in this ever-evolving world that is scary <laughs> Lot of the time. It, it it can be like it's, yeah. it's it can be intimidating yeah and maybe for our clients um you know i i spend a lot of my time and energy focusing on the investment side of things the planning side of things yeah. and and they can call me 
or service oriented things, but generally I'm a middleman between you and Libby. What yeah. sorts of questions might someone that needs some help with something that's right in my forte, but in your forte, what sort of questions should they just bypass me and come to you and Libby with? Yeah. How do I log on? Um, how can you show me how to access a tax document? Um, some of the really cool features with Fidelity are um, people can link their own banking accounts. It usually is even faster than us doing it. Um, you can even update your beneficiaries without going through us. Now, we like to know these things as well, but um, Fidelity has really, really nice tools that um, if you want to get there even faster, bypass Keith. He's going to give it to us anyways, and we're going to be the ones calling you. So <laughs> reach out to us first. Um, we are more than happy to help. And, and and when you're saying bypass me, you're talking about anything that seems service oriented. If you're changing a beneficiary, if, yeah. if you need some money and you don't want to do it yourself, if you're adding a new bank account, those sorts of things, count totally. that quickly for them. Yep. That, that's awesome. Yes. Yeah, I, I I remember many years ago, Amanda, when I had to do all the service, the investments, and the planning yes. things. And um, I think in those days, I probably had bangs. But today, <laughs> today I can lean into you and Libby, and you guys make me look a lot smarter than probably I really am. And I'm yeah. really appreciative of that. Um, what um, what when you think of um, proactive things that that you're doing on behalf of our clients? that that they can kind of kind of rest easier knowing that you're behind the scenes even looking at things before they probably even have a question what are some ideas of those sorts of service activities that you're keeping an eye on for them yeah um the rmds are definitely one thing the required minimum distributions uh, making sure that you're taking those and fulfilling those throughout the year um we can get better on this, but just making sure all beneficiaries are up to date and where you want them. Um, if you've had a beneficiary pass away, um, it's important that you update that so um, or make sure the instructions are on there correctly. So just making sure things are up to date and you are comfortable with where your legacy is fixated or um just like stuff like that, making sure you're getting your monthly payments on time, um, making sure you've got the right banking address. Um, usually if you move, I know before you tell me. So um, Fidelity has been really nice on that, on updating addresses. Um, and it kind of can save you a phone call, but you're welcome to verify it with me first as well. But um, just making sure that your money is going where you want it to go and things like that. Well, great job. And I'm unbelievably thankful for how you serve our clients and, and really make their lives much better than if they did have to talk to a robot all the time. So <laughs> uh, you do a great job. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you. And they make it easy. But, so. <laughs> that's true. Could you pull up the markets? We'll do a quick market update. There we go. You know, before you do that, I'm going to share my screen real quick. Um, oh, okay. This is, this is uh, uh, let me find, I found this this week, and I, I just thought this was really interesting. Share screen. Uh, can you see this letter? Yeah. So, you see the date on this? I got to move my own icon. December 29th. 1965. All right, almost 50 years. I know that's almost 60 years, right? So that's a long yeah. time ago. And uh, this was a letter written to my grandfather. I don't know if you can tell by the font on there. Uh, this was not a computer generated <laughs> letter. This was, no, this was no. tink, 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 tink. And, yeah. and somebody literally was typing this. And this, this goes to the like the service model kind of thing you're talking about. Oh, did I lose your sound? Did I lose my sound?
well, I don't know what you were going to say. Um, there was but, something about this. Yeah. Oh, okay. there you go. <laughs> can, can, you, can you see my cursor? Yeah. See this down here? Yeah. Are you familiar with that, that nomenclature? No. So the WCS is the executive that typed this, and then the CS is the initials. Th those are the initials of the administrative assistant that actually typed the, the letter for him. That's how they used to do things. Oh, so, okay. Like okay. The, the executive wouldn't type his own letter. He would dictate it to his secretary, yeah. and then she yeah. – sounds sexist, but, but in 1965, I'm <laughs> – about 100% sure right. CS was a female. <laughs> and ironically, when you look at it, his initials are in capital letters and hers are small letters. It's just kind of a funny thing of the time. But so, so when my grandfather retired from Western Southern Life, the president of the company dictated a personal letter. Uh, he said, you have my best wishes for happiness and enjoyment during your leisure years. And then he sent this this signed letter, uh, this was his pension, you know, annuity that they gave him in, in, in 1965, it was $171 wow. a month. That might've been a lot of money then. I don't know right. uh, what that would equate to today. It would be a good amount, but even when we were talking about service model, the, the employers of, I think Western Southern was a big company then, the employers actually cared enough to type a letter to the employee when he was retiring. And so yeah. a lot has shifted in our culture. Even when I was sitting here a uh, half hour ago, the, a fellow came in and was talking to one of his friends about when he got fired from a company, um, nobody said goodbye, nobody cared. And uh, even yeah. the people he'd worked with for 10 years didn't really care. And that's the essence of a lot of our culture these days, unfortunately. Yeah. All right, I'll look at the market now. That was just something I had in my mind. It showed kind of the difference, not only in service to customers, to, but service level to employees. Yeah. Can so you if you will drop right down on the triangle beside the, 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 there and see the NASDAQ there. Yes, right there. Okay, and so... Uh, the NASDAQ, what's happened since we came together last week, it's down a little bit this week um, from where it was. It's still holding up nicely. We've got earnings from NVIDIA coming next week, and earnings drive the market a lot of times. So next week will be a real interesting week. NVIDIA is one of the largest companies in the United States now. It, it's had such a big run up in price in the last uh, 24 months that it, I think it's overcome even bigger than Amazon, which is kind of crazy. Whoa. And then maybe if you could pull down the, and show us the S and P real quick. Can you see it? And the S and P is shown a little more strength than the NASDAQ in the last week since we hung out. It's, pretty much the same level it was a week ago. So so the market's kind of broadening out a little bit there. And showing, when I say broadening, it's not just the big seven stocks like NVIDIA and Amazon and Netflix and things like that. And then one more, if you'll drop down one more index. And there's... Um, Would you want the 600? Sorry. The 400 is the one. There we go. Can you see it? Not yet, but it, okay. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm getting third. Okay. there. That's the 600. I see. Did you go to the 400 or? Yeah, I did. I went to the 600. Oh, okay. It took it a while to get to me. Now I see it there. <laughs> I can't remember if I was talking about the 400 with somebody, the mid cap stocks, mid sized companies. And what I was saying is that we really would love to see these guys start to get some energy. And they started to last week. And, and if you can pull up the monthly picture of that. It takes me a minute to get it once you get it. <laughs> and then uh, and then if you right click on your cursor there, it'll let you convert that to a drawing line. 
this one, the temporary pin. And then if you go over, yeah, yep. And then if you go over to middle of 2021 at the top and then draw, draw a horse sign over to the right. It, it is, you know, it's approaching new highs, which if you look to the left of where that horizontal line is that you put did and, and see the diagonal line where we've been over, you know, this goes back, my eyes are failing on me here. Like, I can't tell if that's 2009 or this. Oh, this uh, if you draw, the, yeah, if you draw that angle. Um, 2009, you got it. Yeah, so that angle kind of shows you that historically the mid caps have done really well for investors. But it's been a real dry patch, and so we're really optimistic that that maybe we're going to see something where this begins to take off again. And so it's an opportunity we're watching really, really closely. And um, all that said is uh, we just think the markets are doing kind of normal right now. We expect some volatility going towards the end of the year with the election and all the uh, political news and kind of just background noise is coming on. That's that's the main stuff I wanted to point out this week in the market, Amanda. It's good stuff. <laughs> Anything we need to tell everybody before we uh, part ways? My only suggestion and just encouragement would be well, I would... <laughs> or have a good weekend. <laughs> Happy President's Day. <laughs> well, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Amanda, you have us. You do likewise. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Toodaloo.